Thank you, Hands Warm Hearts. How are you guys? Wait a couple minutes for the live stream to actually kick in. I know that there is a slight delay. Um, don't forget to hit the thumbs up on the stream itself so that um, you can help me out with that. Share my video. You can also share it to Pinterest. Whoops. Whoops. See? See the delay? Sorry about that. <laughs> I heard myself in uh, echo. <laughs> I have Jasper in my arms right now. I'm going to try and move my camera back a little bit. Sorry that I wiggle you guys around so much. Just trying to set everything straight. I have Jasper in my arms right now. And for those of you who don't know who Jasper is, he's my daughter's bunny. I'm actually um, going to go over a couple housekeeping notes while we're waiting for people to get here. But I'm going to put Jasper down with us and see how he hangs out. I'm going to give him a little treat. And um, hopefully he'll he'll chill out for a minute or two so that you guys can can see him. No jumping, buddy. No jumping. Don't be scared. Sorry, <laughs> he jostled my camera. But there he is. He's super cute. And I'm going to find a treat for him so that he will stay still. He does like the treats, that's for sure. Right here, Jasper. Right here. There's your treat. <laughs> so there's the bunny that's always hanging out and making all the noise. <clears throat> on my videos. You guys get to see him in action. He is a cutie. <laughs> and um, while he's having his little treat, I'll talk to you about the new paper pumpkin kit getting ready um, to come out on February 11th. It is called Sunshine and Smiles. And it is going to be in coordination with a, with a set suite that's in the new mini catalog called rain or shine suite and so um definitely check that out you see jasper's trying to check out what i'm showing him here i'm gonna back him up just slightly so that i can bring this into camera um anyway so don't forget about paper pumpkin this today i got my january paper pumpkin in the mail so i did an unboxing video one cool thing about the Sunshine and Smiles next month's kit is that um, Halo is that um, there's going to be an add-on, and there is normally add-ons to the kits, but um, this time it's going to be for the first time ever. They're going to have dyes as an add-on. Right here, Jasper, you have some crumbs. <laughs> he says give me another treat grandma i'm gonna give him one more so he can hang out while we're doing our little um right here jess right here right here <laughs> isn't he the cutest he's so cute Anyway, um, so the I just did an unboxing video. So if you haven't gotten your paper pumpkin yet for January and you're interested in seeing what's in it, I did do a video so that you guys can check out what comes with it. And um, that was the Locked in Love. And there is an add-on for the Locked in Love. So if you're interested, I have this um, flyer that shows the add-on. And you can still get that in my online store. It's still available. Don't forget about Kit's collection. Oh, I also wanted to let all my Paper Pumpkin subscribers know that I ordered them the dye add-on. So don't buy it for yourself because it's already on its way to me. And once I get it, I'll put it in the mail to you guys. I just wanted to do it as a thank you. I've had pretty faithful um, Paper Pumpkin subscribers since the beginning. And I wanted... Um, just to say a little thank you to you guys. So don't order it for yourself. I am going to be doing that um, for you. So I've already ordered it and it's on its way. I think it gets here next week at some point. So, <laughs> oh, 
of Jasper's just barely out of the camera. I'm going to try and get him in camera a little more, but I don't know if I can. He's moving around too much, I think. I'm going to put him down and we can get started on our project. Let me get his little crumbs from his... <laughs> I'll get my little vacuum out. It'll get the crumbs really quickly. It's my little desk vacuum. All right, let's get our stuff back in camera. <laughs> So anyway, Kit's Collection, um, I think that last week I talked about this one. It was available January the 5th, and it's really cute. It's a non-stamping kit, so it's only $13. It's a real cute one to add on. Hey, Lee, thanks for joining us. You missed Jasper. I had him on camera and everything. <laughs> but this kit is so cute. It makes nine cards. And for $13, you can't go wrong, um, even if you just use the card um, envelopes and cards themselves and add other stamp sets to the um, designs. It's a cute one, so toss it on your order. And then, of course, we have the Valentine one that looks like little envelopes, which are super cute. Um, there's 20 treat boxes in that one for $21. If you're interested, it's still available. Um, we have the the masculine one with the um globe and the pocket watches and don't forget about the birthday card organizer kit that's it for those notes again i just want to remind you um as people keep popping in that my um paper pumpkin subscribers in february there's an add-on um, it's the first time ever that it's a die add-on, coordinating dies to the paper pumpkin stamp set. And I've already ordered them for you guys, so do not buy them because I will be putting them into the mail to you shortly. So those of you that are paper pumpkin subscribers, you will get yours. And Clem, I have one for you also, so don't buy yourself one. All right. Annual catalog is still going strong, guys, and um, don't miss out. There's still lots of great things inside of it. Actually, tomorrow's treat box that I've been doing for Valentine's Day, I used paper out of the annual catalog, so don't forget about the annual catalog. It's celebration for those of you who don't remember. How could you not remember? So for every $50 you spend, you're going to get free um, items <clears throat> out of this catalog. I've been using them for my Valentine treats, not all of them, but some of them. And so you will enjoy this. And I will go more into depth with celebration once I finish this week of Valentine treats. Next week, I'll be doing celebration products. So you'll get to see them more in depth. The mini catalog is live and we're allowed to open it now. <laughs> so that's always exciting. And um, I'm using one of the stamp sets from it for today's project. I'll show you that. I did have it on the cover, so you probably already saw. I'm using the Kitty Cats. And they're called Love Cats. I'm trying to find out what page it's on so that I can show you guys. 13. I thought it was in the front, but I just didn't. I must have flipped past it. So it's a $21 stamp set. So adorable. And we are going to be using that today. I've already used... Um, I'm using this cat today and I've already used this cat on one of my Valentine projects. So if you've missed my Valentine projects, they are on YouTube. I've had today's will be the ninth one, I think. So there's plenty of projects for you guys who are interested in making Valentine treats. Um, we're using these turtle bites. That was my inspiration Everybody likes these chocolate turtles. Well, most people do anyway, if they can handle nuts. And they're pretty popular. I think there's four little turtle bites in this package. And so we're using the um, kitty cat to make this adorable box that says, I love hanging out with you. I even did some little dangled hearts on our twine that's wrapped around and it opens from the top. And there is your turtle bites. 
So that's what I'm going to teach you guys how to make today. The little hearts I got from the Give It A Whirl dies. So if you have those, you have the little mini stitched hearts that I used today. And then this heart is from the Heart Punch Pack, which is right here. You get a solid and a scalloped heart just like this. You get the two punches in the pack. Well worth it. Um, if you don't own them, I use them all the time. But I am a little bit heart obsessed as well as font obsessed. So that might be why. But this is the adorable stamp set that we'll be using today. So let me get everything out of the way and we can actually get into the meat of it all and start working on our cute box. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do <clears throat> is we're using a piece of five and a half by eight and a quarter um, basic white thick cardstock. So you can get two of these boxes from one sheet of basic white cardstock. Again, I'm gonna bring out my Simply Scored. It is the um, item I think I use the most in my, um, I think I used this and my trimmer and my take your pick tool so much. It's totally worth getting. So if you don't have a Simply Scoreboard, I highly recommend that you get yourself one. And let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna put this at the eight and a quarter, actually it's eight and a half here. I need to cut it down to eight and a quarter. I forgot that. I wanted to show you guys. Um, so it's just a quarter inch off. So we're going to just line this up at the quarter inch mark, which is this first line. And we're gonna just cut a quarter inch off of this piece. Oh, I can't see very well. Let's get the scoring blade out of the way. There we go. So very small piece you have to cut off. But you're going to lay it down on the quarter, eight and a quarter inch um, length first. We're going to score. This is going to get scored at five eighths of an inch. So you're going to count five. One, two, three, four, five eighths. So that's our first one, five eighths. And then we're gonna score it. You can either flip it and do five eighths again, or you can just go down to the um, seven and five eighths mark, which is five eighths away from this side. So seven and five eighths. And there's our two score marks. Now we're gonna rotate it to the short side. So that's the five and a half inch side. And we're gonna do a few more score marks. This is the main portion of our box. <clears throat> so we're gonna do it at um, one and three quarters, two and three eighths, so it's two and one, two, three ticks, four and one eighth, so it's four and one tick and then four and three quarters. So four and a quarter, four and a half, four and three quarters. And there is our marks. I'm sure you can't see them very well because white, for whatever reason, doesn't show well in the camera, but I really wanted the box to be white because the paper I was using had white accents. But once I burnish, you guys should be able to see a lot better. So let me go ahead and start that process. We're gonna start burnishing on all the score marks. Hey John, thanks for joining us. You missed Jasper, he made quite an appearance. Um, he was on my desk for quite a while at the beginning. <laughs> Okay, so now hopefully you guys can see all the score marks a lot better now that I've burnished them. I'm just kind of move them back and forth so that you can see the score marks white. Like I said, it's hard to see in camera, but sometimes we have to use white for our base, right? All right, hey Eileen. All right, so now we're gonna do a little cutting. 
So you guys know, um, I don't like to use the paper snips for my cutting. I like to use the um, thicker bladed scissor. I love to do paper snips for lots of things, just not to cut along score lines. To me, they're just not, um, I don't know, they're just not good enough for that. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is up on this section, we have a wide, like long skinny and then a skinnier one. The bottom has a big section. So this is gonna be the bottom. We're gonna hold at the bottom. This is gonna be the top flap. So this section here forms the flap on our box that folds around our box. So we don't need these two end pieces because basically we just need the flap to come. We don't need anything on the side. So we're gonna get rid of those two first. So that's gonna be the first thing that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut away those two marks on either side. All right, so now this is the flap of our box that's gonna come around our box. Now we need two tabs on either side so that when you go to close your box, there's no gap there. It kind of fills in that area and gives you a nice clean finish on your edge. So we need those. So you can see how I have them cut. So I'm gonna cut from the side and I'm gonna make two tabs. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut straight and then I'm gonna angle cut them. So there's one. And we're gonna do one on the other side. So here's the second one. And they're just slightly too long. So I'm gonna cut about an eighth of an inch off of them. It's not very much. That's how much it is right there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'll get this piece out of the way so I don't cut it by accident. We'll cut an eighth of an inch off. So there is my front and my side tuck in tabs. <clears throat> now, we're gonna to have to, when this part comes in, we need this to tuck in, so we're gonna cut those as well. So we're gonna come in from the side. There's another small square there. So we're gonna cut on both sides. And again, I'm going to tab that small square, but this one we don't need to trim down. But I do like to tab it to help not have so much bulk in the corners. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And we'll just make sure that they fall out. I'm gonna get my pieces out. There is what our box looks like. So we have our front flap, our top, this is the back of our box, this is the bottom of our box, and this is the front of our box. All right, so while I have it separated, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere all of my DSP pieces. And for those of you who came in late, I'm adding this turtle bites into the box, so that's what's gonna go inside. And this is what the box looks like completed. Although I'm sure when you um, clicked on the YouTube to watch the live, you saw that I had a photo already of the cute box and there's the little dangles. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and glue our pieces on the front. So this is the front. I know it's gonna go front. So my hearts are positionable. I don't want them upside down. So I have to be careful which way I glue them. I don't want them to be like this on the box. So I know it's gonna go in this direction. So I'm gonna open it flat and this it's gonna be pointing towards me. I'm gonna bring my silicone mat in. And of course I'm gonna use my um, wet adhesive. Now the DSP for the front and the back of the box this piece is one and five eighths of an inch by six and seven eighths of an inch. And I did eighths because I wanted a really thin border of white. I didn't want a lot of white to show all the way around. So that's why I had to go with the eighths, but it's okay, we can handle eighths. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this into place, making sure that 
I have a little border on all four sides, okay? So now I'm also gonna put that on the back of the box. So this panel is the back, and of course, I don't want the hearts to be upside down either. So I'm gonna open it the same way I did for the front to help me figure out which direction to place my um, DSP. And again, this is the same size as the front. So this DSP is one and five eighths by six and seven eighths. And we're gonna go ahead and glue it on. So this will be on the back. I'll show you my completed one while we wait for this to dry. So there's the completed one. It has the hearts on the back. And you can see I have on both sides on the top and I have on this flap. The bottom doesn't have anything because after all, it's gonna be probably sitting on the bottom and it doesn't need anything. You can add it if you want to. It would be the same size as the top when you get to that point. <clears throat> All right, so we have those attached. So let's do this flap right here, which is the part that rolls over the front. So I'm gonna position it the direction that I want it to be. And again, I'm gonna use my DSP, it is directional. So I wanna make sure that my hearts are not gonna be upside down. So it's gonna get glued like this. And there's only one of this size. This is half an inch by six and seven eighths. I apologize, the front flap is not half inch, that's the top. It's five eighths of an inch by six and seven eighths. It's a little bit wider than the top is, so this one's the five eighths, the half inch is for the top. So here is for the front flap, the one that folds down. And then for the one on top, I also want that directional. So I'm going to go ahead and lay it. And then this is, oh, I must not have cut that one. I'll have to cut that one real quick with you guys. I don't see it on my, oh no, here it is. I just lose track of everything on my desk. I have so much going on. So this is the half inch by six and seven eighths. And this one's going to go on top. Again, the direction is pointing so that I can see it, not upside down to me. So we're gonna go right here. And it's easier to glue these on when your box is flat than when your box is put together. All right, so now we just have the two sides. Now, when I cut these, I cut them across my DSP. And when I cut the sides, I cut them up and down. Because it's a directional pattern, that's what I chose to do. You don't have to, or if you use a pattern that's non-directional, you don't even have to pay attention to that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this together and then these front panels are going to be the outside. So they're right here on the front. So that's what's gonna get these two pieces. Now these two small pieces are half an inch by one and five eighths of an inch. So we're gonna glue those on the sides and then we can glue our box together. I decided to put quite a bit of DSP on it. I just thought it was pretty decorated with the um, designer series paper. So here's this one. The other cool thing is once you've have the paper on there, it helps you when you go to put your box together because you know what piece is what. And there is our other one. So see, only the bottom of the box doesn't have the DSP. These are getting tucked inside, so they don't matter. All of these tabs are getting tucked. All right, so we're going to start gluing our box together now. You guys still with me? Oh, that... The scoring tool, I think, is $30. Sorry, I just saw your, um, your question, John. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to attach this little tab to this side piece. So it's this tab in between the two rectangle pieces. So I'm going to bring that tab in first, and I'm going to square my box up. 
and I'm just gonna hold that in place until it grabs. And if you hold it in place and you line the edge with that score line, you end up with a nice squared box. Again, I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna add my adhesive and I'm going to bring the box piece up and I'm just gonna hold it in place so it's nice and square until it grabs, just like the other side did for me. All right, <clears throat> the next step is to glue these sides onto the rectangle side. And you can see how our box is coming together. So we're gonna go ahead and put adhesive there and we're gonna glue the side panel on. Hold that in place for a second. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Put adhesive. And we're going to attach our side panel. There is our box. We can put our chocolate inside. These little tabs get pressed down and in. And then this piece is going to flap down, okay? One thing that will help you is while you have it open, you can press and give it a nice burnish on this end and it will help your flap to hug your front piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back out. We'll press these two sides in and then we'll have this flap, okay? So now we're gonna add a Velcro dot. That's what I like to use to keep it closed, is a Velcro dot. So I got these, I think on Amazon. It might have been Joanne Fabrics. I can't really remember, I've had them a long time. But they're by Velcro brand. They're thin and clear fasteners and they're three eighths of an inch. I tend to use half inch tabs a lot. So the three eighths of an inch is a little bit smaller than the tab. And so they work out really well. You get 56 of these circles. As soon as I got them, I stuck them to themselves because one side is more fuzzy and one side is more clear. You can see the fuzzy side is more white and the, um, the other, the loop side is more see-through. So I am going to go ahead and cut one of these off. I'm gonna use my paper snips. And I like to um, just keep the backing on them. So here is my little circle. I'm gonna put it down for a minute and then just put this back in its package. Okay, so I want the clear side, which is the loopy side, the one that's not so white, to be down onto this panel because that way when you open it, you don't see it as much. So when you open this, you have to really look for that closure, but it's there, it's right there, but it's hard to see, whereas you can really see this white on the inside. So I wanted the more see-through to be on the front so it would be a little bit more hidden. So you have to figure out what side is what just by opening the two pieces. I already have them attached, but now I know that this top panel is the see-through one. So I'm gonna flip it over so that the see-through part is down. And I'm going to attach, I'm just gonna pull this clear backing off of the one that's more white. And we're gonna stick that onto the flap of our box. And I'm just eyeballing um, the distance, but if you really wanna measure it, I think it's almost seven inches, so my ruler is just too small, but you can get about a halfway mark and stick it down if you want to. It's just completely up to you. So I'm just gonna put this right there and press it into place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and peel the back off 
of that side. And then when we go ahead and close our box and put a little pressure on it, it will grab and stick to the front. <clears throat> okay, so that is our box so far. Now we'll work on our kitty cat and our heart. We're gonna start with our kitty cat. We're gonna stamp him. So I have some scrap paper here. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna drink a little water. When I talk so much, I get hoarse. So the blue heart is gonna get our stamping on it. I have a scrap of the balmy blue cardstock. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch that out. So there's that, that's what's gonna get stamped on. You can save that for scraps if you want or you can discard it, completely up to you. I'm not gonna punch the white yet, I'm gonna wait until we've stamped our cat and I might need another piece of this um, basic white. So here's our cat stamp and I'm gonna stamp it with the Tuxedo Memento, um, the black ink pad. And so I'm gonna just start putting the adhesive, I mean adhesive, the ink. <laughs> I'm still stuck on adhesive from earlier when I was making the box. And don't be like me and think there's something wrong with your stamp because there's a line through your cat. That's done on purpose so that he looks like he's on both sides of that string. So you're just gonna get him inked up. Um, when a stamp is larger like this, you guys know I like to do it upside down. <clears throat> and he w should fit right here just fine. I'm gonna actually move him over to save some paper. And I'm gonna give him a press. Now, again, larger stamps are a little harder to ink up. They're also a little harder to press down and stamp. So one way you can do this, if you think you're not gonna get good coverage, is to use the Stamparatus. And that's that positioner that I've used many times. It's that little square, and it has those hinged pieces that come over. The reason that you, if you use that, you have your cat on there, he's never gonna move, and if he's not inked up good enough, you can always put more ink on him and put him down. But I'm gonna roll the dice and hope for the best, so I didn't put him on there. And he turned out just fine, so we're gonna roll with him. Let's go ahead and grab our Sweet Sorbet Dark, and I'm gonna color in the heart in his hands. I'm also gonna grab my Sweet Sorbet ink, and I'm gonna stamp the words, I love hanging out with you. And it's gonna go on our heart. So we'll stamp that right there. This is such a cute stamp set. <clears throat> now I'm gonna fussy cut our kitty cat out, but I wanted to go ahead and get my stamping out of the way so that I could clean all my stamps at the same time. It's hard to cleaning stamps that are bigger also. So I just usually bring out my um, my chamois and I just rub it across. Just makes my life easier. Looks like I might need a little water on there. It's a little squeaky. All right, so now we're gonna cut him out. Let's go ahead and punch our scalloped heart and see if we have room here for it. <laughs> yeah, we have room in this corner here. So there's our scallop tart. I'm gonna trim away the excess. <clears throat> and we can start fussy cutting our kitty cat. He's actually simple to fussy cut, doesn't take much time. The hardest part, I think, is around his whiskers. Hi, 
Hi, Melita. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget, guys, if you join my team during celebration, you can choose in your starter kit the mini boho blue Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. It's super cute. I have it here, and I'll show you guys in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this away, get it out of my way so that I don't have as much paper in my way when I'm trying to cut. <clears throat> so we're gonna go around his tail, now his little legs. He's so cute, this kitty cat. But you can do him in lots of colors. I did another project with him. Like I said, this is my ninth Valentine project in a row. This is the ninth day that I've done Valentine projects. And my other kitty cat, I did in pink. So you don't have to make him like a real cat color. It's your project. You can make your cat any color you want. There's those little whiskers. I think that's the hardest part is getting around those whiskers. We're almost on the home stretch. Let's go around this little heart in his hands. There's those other set of whiskers and his ear, and then the string here. This is the easy part, right? Going along this line here. And we'll work our way around and done. All right, let's go ahead and assemble our heart. I'm gonna use the same adhesive that I've been using all along. You guys know how much I love this adhesive. It's super strong. So this little guy is going to get attached onto my treat holder. Now I did hang overhang this end because I didn't want him dangling down below the box so that if you wanted to stand the box up, you could. So before I go ahead and glue this on, I'm gonna go ahead and tie the twine and I'm gonna show you how I made the ends on the twine with the hearts. So first we're gonna work on tying our twine and I used a 25 inch length and this is from the um, 2022 to 2024 in color Baker's twine pack that you get these five colors. So it's this um, Tahitian Tide color, and I think it goes really well with the balmy blue. You can't really tell that it's not balmy blue. So what I wanna do is I wanna grab my ends, and I wanna try and center my piece. And just bear with me, guys. You know I have carpal tunnel. <laughs> so tying bows is really hard for me now because I don't feel anything in my thumb. So I'm gonna make that little X and I'm gonna put my finger there or my nail and then I'm just gonna make a loop so that I can bring that twine through there. And I wanna hold that because I want it to be nice and taut. And so there's my, once I have a knot on it, it's a lot easier to tie a bow. <clears throat> so I do that always first. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make my bow. And one thing about twine is it will like um, twist on you. So one trick that I have for you is when you tie your bow and see how the loops are too big, I want them to be small like this one. So if you hold the knot 
and your twine loop flat at the same time, it won't twist on you and you can get a smaller loop. So again, I'm gonna hold the knot and I'm gonna use my other finger to guide the twine so it stays straight. And then I'm just gonna hold it until I get the right size loop. And I'm gonna go ahead and press that into place like that. All right, now that I have my um, twine attached, I want to figure out placement here. So the heart's going to go about there. That's a good placement. I want to make sure that the twine's not in the way of my kitty. It's not. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a mini glue dot to keep my twine in place. I'm going to actually make this loop a tiny bit smaller. So we're going to grab the mini glue dots. I'm going to grab my take your pick tool. And I'm going to find one. Here we go. And I like to roll it up in a little ball. So there it is stuck on my tip of my taker pick tool. I'm gonna place it underneath where the knot of my twine will go. And that will help keep my bow in place and keep my bow looking how I want it to look. So that's a little trick for your twine in addition to the pulling and holding the loop so that it doesn't twist. Now these are too long, so we're gonna go ahead and trim them. I'm gonna use my paper snips for that. But I want them to be a little bit long because I'm gonna add those little hearts to the end. So I'm gonna bring in my silicone mat here and I'm gonna let those little tips <clears throat> go over the top and I've cut four of these little stitched hearts from the give it a whirl dies. I didn't know what I did with them. <clears throat> here they are right here. So we're going to use this little mini one. I cut it four times. I love these elements, the stitched clouds, the hearts, the stars that are in this give it a whirl. And of course I love the mechanism that it has. This is a great die set and you can make some really fun cards. This makes a really cute opening and it's a fun um, label to have. So it also has rectangles, circles, hearts. You can use them in addition to using them with the Give It A Whirl dies. You can use them as standalones. So I do use this die set pretty often. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just flip my hearts so that the stitching is on the back and we're gonna go ahead and put adhesive on the back of them. And then I'm gonna get <clears throat> my, slowly I'm gonna pick it up and put it in my finger. And I'm gonna take my twine and I'm gonna stick it onto that heart. And then I'm gonna grab my tweezer with my other heart that's down here waiting. And we're gonna sandwich that twine in between the two hearts. So once you have it there basically on, you just have to slide it so that they're equal and then just press it down and it will grab it. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. The hardest part is getting the first heart to attach. And if you cut your twine long enough, you can let it sit, kind of how I'm doing now. But I think I let this dry just a smidge too much. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit more glue. And then I'm gonna grab my tweezer, grab the other, put this heart on top of this one. And then we will sandwich it in my fingers here. So that's how I got the cute little dangle hearts. I think they're super sweet on the ends of that twine there. Thank you, Rita. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Is this your first time watching me live? So we're gonna attach this little heart on here and we wanna make sure that the point doesn't go past this place. So I can see approximately where this heart is gonna lay. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add my glue right to the that flap and then place my heart on there. 
I'm gonna do something similar with the kitty cat. So the kitty cat also is going to lay on here, but part of his back hangs off, but a very slight amount. Most of his midsection to his ear area is gonna be good. So I'm gonna put the adhesive on the kitty cat like that, and I'm gonna avoid this top section, but I am gonna put adhesive almost to the end of my string because part of it is going to stick out. All right, so that will help. And then we're going to go ahead and place my kitty cat down and make sure that he sticks up a little bit past and press this into place. I'm going to let that sit for a second before I snip the ends off. While we're waiting for that, we can go ahead and attach our matte black dots, which is what I chose to use for the embellishment for this box. We're going to use our take your pick tool and the putty end is what I like to use when I do embellishments. I'm gonna use the larger um, dots for this project. So I'm gonna put one here on the heart <clears throat> I always play with this putty to get it just to lay just right for me, but I really like picking up my embellishments with it. To me, it works really well. And there's the other one. So those are my three matte black dots. They come in two sizes, and it looks like there's how many in the package? 160, so quite a few of these. I use them a lot. I like black accents. So there is that. And let's go ahead, this should be set well enough now that we can trim those ends. The other thing I'm gonna do with you guys is stick around because I'm going to show you my other Valentine projects that I've had this week in case you've missed any. And I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of tomorrow's. All right, so we're gonna trim off this edge right here. Just make sure that I get it nice and flush. From both angles there we go so there is our little string with our kitty cat hanging down thanks for welcoming Rita guys you're so sweet so there is our project I'm gonna stand one up and have one flat so that you guys can see how cute they are. I really love how they turned out, and I hope that you do too. Thanks for being here. I want to show you guys the Boho Blue mini machine that you can get in your starter kit if you choose to join my team during celebration. So here is the Boho Blue machine. Isn't it adorable? And I love that it's dark gray with this blue. I think it looks fantastic together. So I wanted to show you guys that. It is available as part of your um, starter kit. So that means if you are planning on spending over $100, it's worth it to um, join my team. <laughs> Let me give you guys um, the dimensions again real quick for everything. The basic white cardstock that we used for the actual box was five and a half by eight and a quarter. Don't forget to cut that quarter inch off like I almost did today um, because you think, oh, it's so close to eight and a half and then you forget. <laughs> You're gonna score down the long side at five eighths and seven and five eighths and the short side at one and three quarters, two and three eighths and four one, and one eighth and four and three quarters. And then um, your DSP pieces, the front and back pieces of your box, those are one and five eighths by six and seven eighths. So you need two of them. And if your pattern's directional, make sure you pay attention when you're cutting that. Your front flap, which is this piece here, is five eighths of an inch by six and seven eighths. And you need one of those. Your top of the flap here is half an inch by six and seven eighths. And then your two pieces that you need for the sides, those are half an inch by one and five eighths of an inch. Um, I use scraps of balmy blue and basic white for our cat and for our heart. And then I use the in color 2022 to 2024 Baker's
twine combo pack for our twine and sweet sorbet was the color of our little dangle hearts let me show you guys the other projects that i've done this week i don't really remember the full order of them so you'll just have to bear with me because they came out when they came out but i don't remember what i did first i think the cotton candy was actually first so we'll do that one first so it's um a slider box that houses cotton candy inside. So that was one of the days. <clears throat> I did last week on the live, we made this for the fun dip holder. And this little ribbon slides off. And you have fun dip inside. So that was one of the projects. We did that last Tuesday for the live. put that ribbon back on then I did this little pretzel um, rod holders that I got at my local Dollar Tree and I made this cute little um, love you a bunch Valentine um, project we did this tag um, box that holds two Ghirardelli chocolate squares inside and there it's made with the tailor-made tag dies so that was one of the projects. I did a lip balm holder. Um, it's a book, a little mini book that holds the lip balm in, inside here. And I used the, um, what was it? Lighting the Way, I believe is the bundle that I used for this, which is dragon, not dragonflies, um, lightning bugs. So I made a little pink lightning bug for that. I did these. And I made them in three different colors. And they're super cute. You only need a half a sheet of six by six plaid paper. So these are a really economical one if you want to make a bunch. And they're super cute to carry with you in the car, throw a few Hershey Kisses in there, and hand them out as you go about your errands, the cashiers, to people that help you to just, you know, there's so many people that would love a little random act of kindness. And these are a really quick and easy treat. Um, very inexpensive because in your plaid pack, you get um, lots of different patterns. There's 48 sheets in this pack. So technically you could make 96 of these from that pack. And it's only $12 for the paper. So there's those little holders. I'm trying to fit everything in camera here for you guys. There's so much to show you. Okay, let me move these up. I had the lollipop holder. And the lollipops are really cool. They're by Charm. I have them in my drawer here. I'll show you. So there's red on one side. And then they say happy Valentine's Day. When I was talking to my sister the other day, she said you could also put them in there with the red heart showing instead of the happy Valentine's Day. So it's really up to you how you want to display those. But these, you get 25 of them in the package. I got them at Target. And then you had the other cat project that I made, which is the little pink cat with the Love Cats set. So that was this one here. And I use the Love You out of the Thanks a Bunch, which is a free set from ce during Celebration. And inside you have Hershey's Kisses and Hugs. So that is that project. So those are everything that I've done so far. Tomorrow's project is going to be a box with a cover on it. And I am using the Adorable Owls stamp set for this. And I'm pairing it with the Something Fancy bundle, which is all of these really great sentiments and these fantastic dies. So if you purchase this die set, you could get the Adorable Owls for free. Not die set, bundle, sorry. <laughs> so I paired those together and I'll give you a sneak peek of the outside, but I'll save what's inside for a special, um, for you guys tomorrow when you watch my video. It'll be live on my YouTube channel at 7 a.m. So let us let me clear out my Valentine stuff and I will bring back in the stamp sets that we used 
for this particular project from today. But as you can see, if you missed any videos, there's plenty on there for you guys to find something that will work for Valentine's Day. We use the Love Cats <clears throat> stamp set and the Give It A Whirl dies for today's project. Does anybody have any questions for me? Thanks for the hearts. I appreciate them, guys. All right, if you don't have any questions, I'm gonna let you guys go. Thanks for being here. I really, really appreciate you guys so much. Remember, if you don't have this heart punch pack, I do recommend it. It's a great one to have. You get the scalloped heart and the regular heart there. And they are pretty cool also. So check those out as well. Thanks for being here, Rita. I appreciate it. Tomorrow's project is going to be adorable. Wait till you see what's inside. It's super cute. Um, and I will see you guys here next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for being here. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Happy stamping, guys.